Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm not doing a read today, but what I am, I actually I think I will upload a, a read tonight, but this is a kind of a piggyback off the last chapters we just read Noah's Ark. I was on YouTube and I saw a PVD podcast had Randall Carlson on and I'm a big Randall Carlson fan. Um, so he just does a lot of good work, um, more on the geological side of uh, archaeology, uh, a lot of stuff like that, natural um, formations of the earth. But PVD asks him Noah's Ark, and um, PVD is uh, Armenian, Assyrian and Armenian. So um, he has interest in this, so I thought it'd be relevant to go through this quick and just put this on um, this channel as well. So let's watch this here. So, so you're talking about the flooding. Let me ask the question about Noah's Ark. So a story comes out, Rob, if you can play that clip, the, the one article I send you that says archaeologists think they might have found the real Noah's Ark. Did you read this article? Have you, have you looked into this or no? Probably. Where it says a mountain in Turkey shows yeah. evidence of human activity in the area around the yep. biblical Mount flood. Ararat. It's yep. said to be Mount Ararat, which yep. you, that's the Armenian uh, uh, name, Armenian yeah. uh, uh, mountain. Archaeologists live that they discovered the final location of Mount Ararat, Mount uh, Noah's Ark. Soil samples from atop the highest peaks in Turkey reveal human activity and marine materials. Dating of the rock and soil from the location match with biblical timing of Noah's Ark. Researchers from a trio of University of Turkey, United States, have spent roughly a year analyzing the rock and soil in the famous Duripanar Formation on Mount Ararat, the highest mountain in Turkey. They believe that the boat-shaped site may yep. hold the ruins of the legendary Noah's Ark. The biblical account of Noah tells God instructed Noah to build a giant ark to spare his family mm -hmm. and pair of animals from an impending flood meant to destroy the evil and wickedness running rampant on earth. Noah's Ark is said to have come to rest on the mountains of Ararat following... A 150-day flood about 5,000 5, years ago. Yeah, Duripanar, right, there it is, yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, is when you look into the, the biblical Hebrew or the description of the ark, it's usually the ark is built of gopher wood. So, yeah, I remember just reading that, the go gopher wood. Um, this Randall Carlson's the guy to listen to for the geological side of something like this. Which in the Hebrew is Gimel Pei Resh, but it had an alter, alternate meaning, Gimel Pei Resh. You can look that up. Mm -hmm. I've done quite a bit of research on that. And it actually originally meant papyrus reeds. And the earliest known shipbuilding technology, techniques, were papyrus reeds. And, but it was further. They went, you know, the, the, um, the, the, co the, uh, the, uh, the pitch that was used on the, um, on it, I think was part of the the whole system that they use. This this would be a whole discussion in itself, uh, Pat. That would be very interesting to get into. Uh, tell me about it. I want to know a little bit about it. I'm I'm curious myself. I'm Armenian. I'm Assyrian. So yeah. How, how, so what are we looking at right there? Well, we're looking. That's why I love uh, PVD. Like if Randall Carlson might have said that to somebody else, like this is a whole nother thing. The way he is, he, he's like, well, what is it though? Like, he's not going to stop because he's genuinely curious in this. King of the Sun's about 430 feet long. Okay. Which is not the, you know, the, the Hebrew cubit, modern Hebrew cubit, standard cubits uh, uh, up 18 inches, which is where we get to 300, you know, 300 cubits at 18 inches would be what, 450 feet? I did look up, I did ask someone to comment uh, back to me what uh, a cubit was. Someone did actually, so thank you so much. And I did some more reading on that also. And I looked up the Greek cubit, Egyptian cubit, and also um, the Hebrew cubit and the Egyptian and Greek cubit are a little bit longer, like he says. This thing is a little bit longer than that, which suggests it was not using the modern Hebrew cubit, um, or that the Bible is not referring to the modern Hebrew cubit, but perhaps even the Egyptian cubit, uh, which was longer. Egyptian cubit was, um, oh, about 21.6264. Look up royal cubit. I think it... And I didn't know that. I thought the cubit, the Egyptian cubit was like 18 inches, so that's the, another older cubit in Egyptian. I think it'd be about... 20 in point six two inches in length royal cubit so this thing is uh, so with the greek also you know further back it might be a, a royal cubit in greek form uh 300 cubits long 
yeah, there's your common cubit, 18. Yeah, mm -hmm. royal cubit, mm -hmm. 20.64. Mm -hmm. So that thing that we were just looking at works out to be about 300 cubits if we're using the royal cubit rather than the modern Hebrew cubit, which is a coincidence. Uh, you know, and the, con the, the, the controversy over that thing, for his, his, it's been around for years, 30 or 40 years ago. David Fassold wrote a really interesting book, I think came out in the 70s or early 80s uh, on that site. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of controversy, whether it was natural or something not natural. And so I haven't kept up with the research, but this may be, yeah, there he is right there. Now, that's that's a drogue stone that he's standing next to. And you see a big stone mm -hmm, like that? Mm -hmm. It's got that hole in it. So if you've got an anchor chain or a rope, it goes through that hole and you drag it behind the boat, the, 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 the boat in order to keep the keel aligned parallel with the current. Because if you, if you, if the keel. That's a pretty crazy thing to find, like from an old ship, a huge anchor. Gets out of parallel with the current, then you're going to, it's going to swamp. You know, I've done a lot of canoeing and I knew, you know, on, when you're on a fast moving river, you know, you want to keep your keel aligned with the current because as soon as it turns, <laughs> you know, transverse mm -hmm. to the current, you're going to flip. So the drogue stone, is, is towed behind the ship, and that keeps the keel aligned. So there are these really big drogue stones that have been found. Now, what ships were they? I don't know. But I think David Fasshold was speculating that, that some of the big ones may have even been associated with arc-sized ships. And it's bizarre, but if you come over to North America <clears throat> and you look at uh, legends of Native Americans— um, you know, there was giant floods, and basically how they survived mostly was a couple of the primary ways they survived these giant floods that swept over the country and, and wiped out their ancestors was either a high mountain, which now would be a sacred mountain, or a great canoe that was translated as a great canoe. Now, that has been um, dismissed by historians and archaeologists saying that, well... Which doesn't mean much, you know, if you follow channels like D. Dunking or you follow Jimmy Corsetti, you'll find out that like archaeology, they don't like being wrong. So if they painted a narrative one way and then years later they have to be like, well, that was wrong. They don't like doing that. And that's a big problem with all this. They must have learned the story of Noah from missionaries, and then they grafted that onto their own religious traditions and so on. But that can be dispelled because we know that that people like George Caitlin, who was the Indian artist who, oh gosh, when he, he spent decades and traveled and, and lived amongst dozens and dozens of Indian tribes. And he recorded all of their traditions and their beliefs. Uh, Rob, if you look up George Caitlin, C-A-I-T-L-A-N, I believe, Indian artist, he recorded their accounts, and, and I have a great quote from him at the end of his book called Last Rambles, and basically he's saying that he went to all of, yeah, yeah, there's some of his artwork, George C Catlin, Catlin, not Caitlin. Um, so at the end of his book, The Last Rambles, he's talking about the, the, the traditions of American, Native Americans, and he says that there was such a diversity of language and and, and symbolism and beliefs and all that, but they all had one thing in common. Mm. And that was their belief that there had been this great flood. Now, what I've done is I've shown, absolutely, we can prove that there were great floods, um, certainly in North America, but it's showing up the evidence for these gigantic floods is showing up all over the planet. Um, and they're directly related to the, the place to see the, uh, extinction of the megafaun. Because when you have a big flood, one of the things it does is it rips up part of the earth in one place and then dumps it somewhere else. Uh, you have erosion and you have deposition. Well, if an animal is caught in a flood and they're not completely ending up getting disarticulated, their remains will then wash down and be found in the flood deposits. Most of the remains, the fossilized remains of megafauna that we find, are in megaflood deposits, in gravel pits, peat bogs, permafrost. Um, so it looks to me like 
there was two factors. And if the younger Dryas impact hypothesis is true, which is appearing to be more and more so the case, it means you had simultaneous um, huge fires followed by huge floods. So what the fires didn't wipe out, the floods finished the job. There it is, the younger Dryas. Was in a period in Earth's geological history that wow. occurred circa 12,900 to 11,700 years before present. And that's something I did mention, I think the last read or the one before that, um, you know, the younger Dryas impact, it seems to correlate well with the, all these different cultures saying a great flood happened. So thought that was pretty relevant with what we're doing on this channel for right now. Um, so again, I would really appreciate if you guys gave a like and subscribe and I will see you later today. Uh, if you watch this one, I'm going to upload another read. Um, it's, I think it's the start of the rainbow, uh, chapter nine or 10 of Genesis. So, uh, thank you guys. I'll see you soon.